Hello 1P and now today we're going to get the heart of algebra which is solving equations. This is what we're doing all this for. When we stick in letters for things that are missing it's because we want to be able to find those things that are missing. Um, so our goal here is I can solve for the unknown value in an equation using algebraic methods not just by inspection. So we got to learn some algebraic methods and we're going to start with some simple ones that hopefully you can look at and just know what the answer is um, but we're going to show you how to do it with algebraic methods so when they get hard when you can't just look at them you can fall back on those algebraic methods to figure it out. So we're going to solve some equations uh, and we're going to start with a few things that you already know. A variable is a letter or symbol that takes the place of a number we don't know. An equation is a math expression involving variables and an equal sign. So to be an equation you must have that thing. You have to have an equal sign in order to be an equation. Um, and we can solve an equation to figure out the value of the variable. Now hopefully you can look at this equation and you can solve it. x plus 6 equals 10. Uh, if you don't know that x is 4, um, then we have a bigger problem to deal with. But you should be able to look at this and know what goes with 6 to make 10. And we're going to just show you algebraically how we would do this thing. So I want you to think of the equation as a balance uh, with the middle being the equal sign and everything on this side has to balance everything on this side and the equal sign is our pivot. So we want to get x by itself. Now how do we get x by itself on here? Well maybe I could start taking away some of the other stuff here. If I take away a 1 though, if I make that go away, um, my balance tips. This will go, uh, this side gets lighter, so this side will go down. And in order to write that balance again, I'm going to have to get rid of something on this side so that it's not as heavy. So I have to get rid of one there. Um, and I could keep doing that until the x is by itself. I get rid of one on here, but oh, oh no, my scale's going to tip again. So then I have to get rid of one over here so that the scale goes back to normal. And I get rid of one here, then one here, then one here, then one here, one here, then one here, one here, then one, he one here. Now my x is completely by itself. And remember, this is true now um, because I just kept doing the same thing, trying to keep my balance. So what this tells me, once I got rid of it all, is that x has to equal 4 because one side of the balance always equals the other side. This side is only x and this side is 4, so x has to be 4. Well, what we just did there was kind of the algebraic method, although we write it down differently. Our ultimate goal is to get x by itself, but to do this we have to keep the scale balanced. So right now x has six pesky ones with it, so I need to remove them, and we just finished that. But if I remove them from one side of the scale, I have to remove them from the other side so I don't upset the balance of the scale. Now here's how we would write it down mathematically. I would say I want to get x by itself, but this six is causing me some problems. And I know I need to get rid of that 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a different color here and I'm going to get rid of that 6. I'm going to put minus 6 because to get rid of 6 positives I need 6 negatives. Now they're going to go boom. They're gone. Um, but now my balance has tipped because I got rid of 6 on this side so this side is lighter. In order to keep my scale right I have to get rid of 6 on this side as well and then these six negatives will take out six of those positives and what I'm going to be left with on this side is simply four and what I'm left with on this side is simply x. And so this is the algebraic, the mathematical way to write it down. Now what about with two steps? Um, let's take a look at this thing and I'm just going to write in the, the x's here. This side has an x and another x, and another x, and another x, and then it's got two ones. And this side has ten ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Now, what I need to do, I have to get x's by itself. So on this side, in order to get x's by itself, I have to get rid of two of these ones. I'm going to get rid of that one and that one. But now, what that means is that my scale has tipped this way because this side's heavier. I took stuff off of this side. So I have to do the same thing that I did before on the other side. So I have to do that. You have to get rid of two ones on that side as well. Um, now I have only x's on this side, but I've got a bunch of stuff here. So I'm going to have to try and, and group them around. So I've got four x's. So I'm going to, whoops, those didn't, those are all grouped together. I got four x's on this side. And I have to divvy this up between these four x's so that I put them together or find out what each of them are worth. So, and I have a feeling this isn't going to work either. Not really. Um, I'm going to, here, let's pull these to the side. I've got eight things to distribute among these four x's. So I'm going to take one and put it with this x. And I'm going to take this one and put it with this x. This one with this x. This one with this x. And I'm going to go back up. which means that now what this tells me is now that I've divided it up into pieces that each x must equal 2 um, because I've divided it up into equal groupings. So each x is equal to 2. Now let's see if that works. Um, if each x is equal to 2, that would mean that 4 times 2 because x is 2 plus 2 should be the same as 10. So is it? 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2. Uh, 8 plus 2 is 10. So it is. It actually works. I got what I was supposed to get. So how do we do that mathematically? So once you get rid of all those pesky ones, then you split up your x's. So here's how we're going to do it without the scales. We're going to take, uh, first of all, we got to get rid of those pesky ones. So I'm going to take my different color. How do I get rid of positive 2? I throw two negatives on top of it, and they go boom. But if I throw two negatives on this side, I, that tips the scale. So I got to throw two negatives on this side, and it booms away two of those. So what I'm left with on this side is simply 4x, because I got rid of those negative 2s. And on this side, these two negatives will take away two of those positives, and I'm left with only eight positives. Now I have to divide it into groups. How do you divide into groups in math? With division and we're going to divide it into four equal groups. But if I divide that side into four equal groups, I got to divide that side into four equal groups. And now I figure out my answer. Four divided by four is one. So I've only got one x on this side. And on this side, eight divided by four is two. So this tells me that x equals two. Now, steps to solving equations. The golden rule of algebra. First step, first get term that has, there should, there's a word missing there, first get the term that has x by its, in it by itself by adding or subtracting constants from each side, then divide the coefficient to see each individual x is valued at, to see, there's a word missing there, to see what each individual x is valued at. So that brings us the golden rule of algebra, here it is. Uh, you can see this on the front of my classroom too. It says, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side. So here we're going to test this out. And it looks like there's something to pull out here too. What is this saying? It says, to get rid of negatives, throw positives at them and vice versa. So we'll take that into consideration when we're here. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is get, here's the term that has x in it. And I want to get it by itself. And this negative 2 is stopping it from being by itself. So to get rid of two negatives, I'm going to throw two positives on top of them. And they go boom, and they're gone. But if I throw two positives on this side, I have to also throw two positives on that side so I don't upset the balance of the equation. That means that all I have left on this side is x because these go away. And over here, these two positives take out two of those negatives, so I'm left with negative 3. Now, over on the other side, I've got an x. 
and I'm going to get rid of anything that's stopping this x from being by itself. Notice it's on the opposite side of the equation. We don't care what side of the equation it's on. We're going to get x by itself. So I'm going to add 5 over here to, because to get rid of 5 negatives, I have to add 5 positives. I also have to add 5 over here. So my actual answer then, I've got 11 on this side, and then those are gone completely, so I have just x. So x is 11. Uh, if we want to check that, we take this negative 5 and then we add x, which we found out to be 11, and we're going to hope that we get 6. So is negative 5 plus 11 6? Yep, it actually is. So we're good. Okay, You can always do that little check to see if you're right. Now these ones are ones where there's a couple of steps in it. So the first thing, remember, we want to, here's the term that has the p in it. We want to get that by itself. What is stopping this term from being by itself? Well, this negative 2. This negative 2, and when I say by itself, I mean by itself on this side of the equation. Remember, we want to take this equation and get all our p's by itself first by getting rid of the 1's. So, What's stopping it from being by itself? It's those two negatives. So I'm going to add two positives to make it go boom, but I also have to add two positives on one side. Golden rule of algebra, whatever you do to one side, you have to do the same thing to the other. So this side I'm only left with 3p, and on this side I have negative 27 because these two positives take out two of those negatives. Um, but I'm not done because now I've got to split it up into equal groups. So this side gets split into three equal groups so I can figure out what P is. And then if this side gets split into three equal groups, I have to split this side into three equal groups. Now, the threes are gone, so I have P by itself, which is what I wanted. I wanted P completely by itself. On this side, negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9. Now, Last one over here. We are going to, first of all, figure out what we want to get by itself. So I've got negative 12r that needs to be by itself. Um, always go, we'll go for the variable. Um, what's stopping it from being by itself on this side of the equation? Well, it's this negative 4 is the problem. Or, sorry, positive 4. How do I get rid of a positive 4? i got to throw some negatives on top of it. If I throw four negatives on top of four positives, they go boom and they're gone. Uh, but if I throw four negatives on this side, i got to do exactly the same thing to the other side. So i got to throw four negatives on there. And what that gives me on this side is 96 because these four negatives take out four of those positives. On this side, I have negative 12 R. Now I have to split it up. And I'm going to divide this side by negative 12. Whatever the coefficient of the variable is, that's what we're going to divide by. Because then this turns to 1. And all I'm left with on that side of the equation is simply an r. But remember, whatever we do to one side, we have to do the same thing to the other side. So if we have to do exactly the same thing to the other side, I take 96 and divide it by negative 12. And 96 divided by negative 12 is negative 8. Now, just a small word about proper form before you go on to the practice questions. You keep one equal sign per row and keep your equal signs all lined up. Notice how I was putting the equal signs underneath? That's proper form. And I would like you to use different colors to show what step you are adding onto the line. So I want you to put these different colors in exactly the same way I did it. Okay, And that brings us to the end of solving equations.